Hey everybody, Worldly here, and today I'm going to be commentating my world record speedrun. This is a full updated guide for the Divinity Original Sin 2 any% percent speedrun, and if you want to get a little bit more in-depth, I do have a series here on YouTube. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so we're going to get started right away here. You switch to Fane, grab Knight, um, you're going to remove Constitution, and then uh, remove Warfare and Two-Handed and put two points in Polymorph. Then uh, grab Telekinesis with Chameleon Cloak and Tentacle Lash. Remove Opportunist and grab Lone Wolf. Um, and that'll get you ready for the speedrun as Fane. So right now we're just watching a um, replay of the world record run that uh, I created. Um, and we'll kind of go through because we got a lot of perfect RNG. So you're going to skip text, um, swap your abilities around. I'm not going to be too specific about this. If you have seen the original, um, the original speed run here, you'll know most of this. Um, and if you need more in-depth tutorial, the original speed run is there. Um, the original speed run tutorial is there, um, very in depth. So you're going to use one, one, four, uh, as the tech skip there. We're going to grab this bedroll and we actually don't grab the second bedroll anymore. We head uh, straight over to the door is no longer necessary. <clears throat> Skip the text, walk through the door, uh, use your bedroll and then use tentacle lash to hit the guard. Bedroll ensures that we get uh, knockdown immunity, then open up your stats and skill strength uh, to maximum. The reason we do this is so that we don't want one shot the guard. So come upstairs, grab the water barrel, um, click just past the fire, otherwise your character may walk all the way around. So um, walk up underneath this lamp, use the water barrel to clip through the door, grab the first two death bog barrels, and then move the third one onto the uh, wheel there, and then move it up to the top of the stairs. Use your bedroll here to clip through the wall. I was placing it too far um, to the north. I should have placed it a little bit farther down, just like so. Uh, to be able to clip through, so I lost a little bit of time there. Setting my uh, inventory over the ocean ensures that I don't accidentally throw the Firestorm Grenade uh, in the wrong spot. So I just spam click the Firestorm Grenade and, uh, and then place it in the correct spot once it's in my hand. So we split here, um, which is, uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty slow. Um, but if you can get under two minutes as a beginner, you're definitely doing good. Um, but, uh, 145, I think is my best for that one. Uh, now here I set my inventory up, uh, and you know, just pull the death log barrels out. If you pull them too quickly, like I did there, uh, you're, you'll still be placing the first one before the second one starts coming out and your character won't actually do it. So we picked up that box because we needed to clip through a gate later and we're going to head on to Fort Joy. Well, actually, we're heading over to the Red Prince. So we talk to the Squirrel, whom I actually forgot to dismiss here. Uh, normally, I would talk to him again and dismiss him in the run. So speed through the text. Uh, 42 sec text skips to get to the, even as a born fighter, um, you pick select the fourth option and then uh, select the sec second option to get him as an enchanter. Um, more in depth on the, the uh, part two of my tutorial there. So we switched to Prince and we moved him up to that rock and then we come up to the stairs and use Chameleon Cloak. Clicked into the fog. And now our friend Prince here is on the rock. He'll use rain and lightning to initiate that fight. Um, we walked up to the, to the Brazier so that we could get the checkpoint. Uh, we set up our gate clip here by dropping the box fairly close to the hitbox and then skipping the text that immediately ensues. And then once the dog has its turn, we click on the door. So here what I did was I actually pressed F2 while in that small and un unskippable scene there um, and then skipped, his, skipped Prince's turn and then went back. And then that allows you to actually skip uh, Prince's turn a second time during that because we're waiting for that crocodile to come down. So we come to the top of these stairs, grab, uh, sorry, use uh, Chameleon Cloak, 
then uh, just click far enough until you can actually click on this boat. Your character will navigate through by himself. So, so right away you want to move away from the cat. Put two points in strength, two points in wits, uh, all skilled up. Uh, telekinesis and huntsman scoundrel and warfare and you want to do that relatively quick quickly um i used to be very slow at that but uh got pretty good after a while so here the crocodile teleported to us we used hail strike on it um you can use any skills you want as long as you kill the crocodile hail strike is probably the worst ability to use because you can actually freeze yourself like i did here but as you can see prince's time is not the important one it's fane's time So we're switching back and forth. Uh, we're going to skip this text and then grab this barrel. I think I actually messed up here. Yeah, I did. But I was able to grab this second barrel here. Um, you only need one. You can grab both if you have time. But uh, if you're too slow with the fire, you will. Uh, you may get. Um, it may catch on fire. So right there, I actually uh, finished off that alligator, grabbed the gloves of teleportation, and then dragged them into Fane's bag, um, where he just equipped them. We're just moving on. Uh, so we're going to set Prince up here. We're going to skill his strength so that he may pick up these barrels. And then uh, switch back to Fane, keep him moving. And then we're going to move Prince over to... We're going to move Prince to the Fort Joy Square. Uh, remove one of the barrels because he's overweight. And then he's still overweight, but he can walk. So we send him down to there. Uh, to the uh, where he can get money or <laughs> where he can sell items down to where I can't remember his name anyways so we walk down to the end of these stairs uh, so use chameleon cloak Griff that was his name <laughs> um, so use chameleon cloak and walk over to this spot and you want to set up this barrel near the uh, ladder here and now this part's a bit tricky um, if you are here, if you look at the, um, the timer here, we're at six minutes and 12 seconds, um, with that barrel placed. So right now you can see that, um, I'm going to use my mouse here. You can see that, um, the knight is right here in the bottom, right? And Alexander is finishing his last line right here, which is perfect. So we know that they're going to come both come towards here, um, at the correct time. So this is the first different. This is the first major difference in the uh, from the old speed run. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the barrel as we normally would. Um, I, there's a little line here. You may not be able to see it in the recording, but uh, you want to set it um, exactly center on the line and then move it towards this grassy wall just a little bit. Um, the if it's closer to the wall, it'll extend out a bit further. But because of where the knight will go, I'll show you right here. So because of where um alexander is you need to move it back a little bit so that the the fog extends out further um but you also can't move it back too far or it won't extend out the uh on the other axis as much so you have to move it back just a little bit from that line and you'll see here we get a nice perfect cloud fog kills all three enemies there is an invisible enemy here um we got a little bit unlucky here with the with this man's place with the uh, archer placement he will sometimes um, be facing a different direction. You can actually sneak all the way down and grab uh, Alexander's loot before using Chameleon Cloak. But here, I just waited, took my time, and did it this way. So I use Chameleon Cloak uh, right as Geist is using his ability. I went and looted the corpse, uh, moved into the spot on the water, and then I just used Teleport on the magister so here uh, you want to make sure that you skill up your strength and your warfare um, before your turn and then that ensures that your tentacle lash here will do more damage you can hit it uh, you can hit the worm I would recommend only hitting the worm um, it makes the fight go faster uh, so you want to flee combat immediately the window will pop up go to the hollow marshes and uh, continue on as you normally would in the speed run here. So we're gonna talk to Hild. Uh, we're moving everything to Fane's bag. This is a little different too. Instead of having to move everything into a bag and then move it to Prince's uh, bag, we just simply go over to Fane's bag and we can sell directly from Fane's bag even though he's not at the market. And it's a little bit, it's, it's just easier. There's, there's no faster way because you still have to wait for the worm fight. 
but um, technically this is faster. It's just it doesn't save you any time. Um, it's just easier. Uh, so sell everything except for the static discharge scroll. If you guys don't know where that came from, it came from the dead body uh, right before the, the cursed flaming pigs. Uh, and apparently I had two cloak and daggers. I didn't realize that. <clears throat> so uh, you're going go to go talk to Butter, grab Tactical Retreat, and uh, this time you can just hit the barter button and it will grab all the money and uh, um, and all the money necessary. So we actually, I don't know if you saw that, but we clicked on the barrel to go pick it up, the one we had left behind, um, and it just appeared in our bag. So now we're going to learn the two skills. Uh, and we're going to move one of the death fog barrels. We should, yep. So right now we have one flame barrel, one death fog barrel, um, and our skills. So here we can see that the void woken worm is still at 200 health which is quite a bit. Um, I believe it goes down fairly quickly though. And once it does, uh, I get pretty good. Yeah. So the necro fire did a lot of damage. So here I decide, okay, I'm going to go invisible. Um, I'm going to jump into, into the fight, but I'm not going to come invisible right away. I'm just going to move in. And then I use tactical retreat to immediately be in the fight. Um, I got my turn before the, uh, before, so it was very important that I moved in when I did, you want to move in before this man's turns end, um, while they're up here, because if you jump in the fight while the void woken worm is, it's his turn, he'll go underground and he'll pop up up here. So you want to make sure to jump in a little sooner rather than later, uh, because it becomes an issue that way. Okay. But here we're able to just hit the worm. Uh, kick it and then we're able to use teleport on him so if the worm has less than or has about 70 health you're you're doing perfect you'll you'll one shot him um but he had 80 i did 75 damage unfortunately but i was able to finish him off with a kick there um so we just teleport the last um magister arrow arrowman whatever you want to call him bowman um and then wait. So you can loot the worm here. I just I just don't because I never do. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable with managing your money very scarcely, uh, you can loot the worm. So we skip through Malady's text. So that was the first major. Uh, so that was the first major skip. As you can see, I got a. Oh, actually, as you can see, I'm at eight minutes and forty two seconds. Um, we run down, teleport down here, talk to the talk to the ghost and just skip all the text so right here uh we actually need to grab two more two more barrels so we place ourselves near malady because we're going to be overweight we grab the death fog barrel the last one from prince and then uh, there's a barrel here that we can grab and a barrel here so we're overweight we can't move um, and we're going to finish the run with the solid 903 which is a fantastic uh, time for that um, as you can see on my face there. Uh, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, if you can do that in about in under 10 minutes, you're you're in for a good run. You know, 25, 25 minute run there. Uh, so we're going to continue on with the run. That was the next split. Uh, I call it Chad because I hate Alexander. Uh, <laughs> and uh it's it's the worst split to do but if you made it past there um it can be smooth sailing from here as long as you uh take your time and don't mess up as many times as i did before <laughs> before i got this run anyways uh moving on so right off, off the bat we're gonna skip the text um we still have teleport in the first slot so as you can see my character started casting it uh, i just hit escape quickly because i know it's going to come up i just have my hand on escape hit it and then press tab, open up the inventory. So right here, we're going to set the uh, barrels up on the tip here. So I know that there's an enemy that's going to spawn right here. And uh, there's also a few enemies here, but that's not as important. The important one is one that's right here. So we want to place this barrel uh, on this red thing. Uh, sometimes you can place it, you, you may want to place it a little bit closer to this side uh, so that you get the distance you need. But otherwise, we're going to stack these barrels and then we're gonna run over to this side and we're gonna put the last flame barrel right here. This will allow us to do the trick um, a lot more consistently than we used to. 
So, um, and then of course the death fog barrel goes down on the uh, bottom there. So we're going to use uh, tactical retreat and then skip Malady's text and then use the rest of the haste to get to this door. Use the barrel to skip through the door, but uh, of course I mess up here. It's not a big deal. Just pick up the barrel and you should be able to clip through. Um, teleport the book to you. Grab the chest. Grab the book. And you're going to use the chest that you just picked up to clip back through the wall. You just go up to the edge of the wall um, on the top side there and, and go up. So we're going to go up all the stairs. Um, move right. There's actually a spot right here. If you just move to the front of this, then you can jump up here uh, using cloak and dagger. Then we're going to use tactical retreat to jump to Kerbin, and we're going to loot Kerbin and uh, continue on. So if you loot the worm, you don't generally need to loot Kerbin, but if you don't loot Ker uh, the worm, you do need to loot Kerbin. Um, it is a little tiny detour, but I I just prefer to do it because it's more consistent. The worm will sometimes have other items that aren't worth as much. Well, Kerbin will always have the same items, I'm pretty sure, or a few items that are the same. So we just talk to the boat, skip the text, and uh, we're going to jump over here to initiate the text with Malady, skip her text, and uh, start the boat fight. Now here's where you'll see our setup uh, was perfect, was nice and good. It was nice and perfect. If you do this correctly, I believe, so I did a quick save here. I, you always want to do a quick save because if it doesn't work, you can reload and it only loses you about eight seconds versus if you try to continue on with a non-perfect one, it will lose you about 30 to 40 seconds. So um, right here you can see uh, there's the weaponized monk here is burning. There's um, this guy, the guy that's standing here, the bowman is not important. It doesn't matter if it hits him. All four enemies here. Um, I bel Oh, see, there's Geist here um, that actually didn't die, but he must die. He must have killed himself, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately, he, he must have killed himself. And then uh, this is the important one here with the fire. As long as you see that this person took some damage, you'll know that you've had, you have a good setup. So we got everybody here. I'm guessing this Geist must finish himself because I didn't even see him. Um, and I still, it still worked, so he must have died when he tried to move. So we're going to move up uh, about a foot here um, as soon as it's our turn. So we move up. You, we use teleport on the, uh, the archer. And we just throw him into the death fog there. And he dies. So it's more important to, it's, it's important to get him uh, that way. You do have to move forward in order to get him though. So we come to the basement. We... Uh, let the thing explode there. Then we use our small poison bottle to regenerate some health. Uh, it's not super necessary, but it's like a just in case uh, we do get hit again, then we're okay. So here, um, I'm waiting for the timer to get down to about one and a half, uh, maybe one and a quarter turns. So right now, right there, it would be at one and a quarter. I should have cast there. Um, but I was waiting for the fire to go off because I was a little bit slow. So here... Uh, the guy, every, everyone on the ship is already dead. So you'll see that Malady goes, okay, we're done. And, uh, goes to the next scene. So the only difference is from, this is another major difference from the last one with the old setup. You had to get really lucky with the RNG and you had to jump up to this spot and kill the last person. So saves about, I would say maybe 10, 15 extra seconds, um, with perfect RNG, if you did, had perfect RNG in both. So. This setup can be more consistent though. And if you only if you don't hit that uh, that other person with the fire, you can still do the old setup and you'll only lose about 10 seconds, right? So Okay, so here we're just going to skip the text. Um and then so we're going to skip the text. It's going to immediately cast whatever's in your first one. Um if you're using the scroll wheel, I mean, if you're using the scroll wheel to skip text. So it's going to immediately cast whatever's in your first slot uh but you're just going to override it with hitting five on your hot bar to use cloak cloak and dagger and specifically use cloak and dagger uh and then press six to use bless on this ghost and or on amadia uh, skipper text she'll teleport you back now here we can run up to the top of these first steps and then use tactical retreat to increase our speed here um, as you can see, actually, there is actually some skill points I have. 
Um, and I, it would be good to be able to find a spot where I can level up, maybe right here if I opened up the tab, leveled up, and then as soon as my character got there, I could jump uh, using Cloak and Dagger. So that's the end of the Act 1 split. Uh, we got 12 minutes, 12 seconds. We saved ourselves a good 31 seconds there over our PB. Um, our PB had a terrible boat, so it was a good time. Act 2 is all about movement optimization. So try to, like, and so there's no, there's no fights really in Act 2. So try to work on pyramid, pyramid throws and whatnot. If you guys are finding it really hard to throw the pyramids, um, try turning your game to full screen, turning the settings down, maximizing your frames per second, because uh, I find that when I play in window mode, the it feels like I'm throwing the... <laughs> it feels like I'm using a fishing rod to throw the uh, pyramid around. Anyway, so we're going to use Tactical Retreat uh, as far as we can here, and then we're going to go into our inventory and skill strength and telekinesis as fast as humanly possible. Um, or as fast as we can and we're gonna throw the red we, we swapped the teleport with the blue pyramid um, I should have done that earlier I should have done that uh, when when should I have done that I should yeah I should have done that while I was running down the stairs before because um, I wasted a bit of time there but yeah throw the red pyramid into the water use your scroll wheel to teleport to it and then use cloak and dagger to jump to here if you try and um, you can walk in, but your character will do just that. He'll walk. So don't try to pick up the pyramid while you're in the water. But here we throw the pyramid by the fish pile and then we just throw it up by the uh, bush there. Then we want to throw it on the top of this angle and then throw it down to the dock. Throw it across to the beach by the water. Throw it to the top of the dock and then throw it to the edge of this building. Because I'm motoring here. Uh, throw it. So, so for this one, um, on any of these, po on these posts, if you bring your mouse up and you just hover it on the post itself, you don't have to put it on top. If you try to put it on top, it'll probably glitch out. But if you put your mouse on the post, it should, um, it should go, it should like stick to the top. Uh, sometimes there's like grid locking areas for the thing there, for the pyramid. Um, so I move it to the front of this, uh, the wood there. Then I move it to the edge of here. So we used to steal this sword um right away but here we're actually going to just skip it and we'll get it on the next run or the next time around uh because it's technically faster to do it that way so <clears throat> i don't know if you missed that i'm just gonna go back a little bit so right here we placed it on this railing um it's not super important to place it on the railing anymore you can place it on the stairs just try and place it as far up as possible uh and then from here you want to place it on these bags you don't need to place it on the post anymore uh, the post is a lot harder to actually place on, so we don't worry about it too much. And from and uh, it's easier to get to the bags. So we place it in the uh, rock at the top of the last grass patch, and then on this path, and then just a little ways more up the path, and uh, then we can place it on the other side of this rock, which I actually messed up. This was one of the few few movements that I messed up. So here we just move it to the uh, near the fence. Uh, on the path is fine. You need to make it so that the pyramid can see over the fence. So we go to the top of the log here and then go right before the torch, which is this little stick right here. Um, you want to make it sure it's just a little bit uh, before the torch. And then uh, the next one you want to place as far over as possible, which is usually just to the edge of that torch there. And here again, just like the post, you can place your mouse on this rock and the pyramid will stick to this area. And that's a good indicator. To, uh, be able to move it so here um, I actually moved it a second time without teleporting to it so just remember to do that open up your inventory and drop the blue pyramid in the water and then throw the blue pyramid over to the other side I kind of use this uh, this as an indicator of where to drop the pyramid so I just drop it somewhere in that region uh, in the water so we use the red pyramid to teleport to it by right clicking it and hitting use we talk to this guy, skip his text. The Advocate actually is his name. Um, skip his text, and then you can use 116 to skip his text. I wasted a little bit of time there. Uh, I messed up his text skip. So here we're going to drop the barrel. You can either attack it or you can move it uh, to kill him. Spam your pyramid and uh, teleport out of there. If you open up your pyramid before killing him, you can actually just kill him and then click on the pyramid to get out of there. Okay, so we just moved the pyramid up. Uh, go talk to this guy and skip through all this text. Pick up your pyramid. 
so for this, I have my waypoint set to the tilde key. I don't, I didn't mention that before, um, the tilde or grave key. And so of course, um, it's a lot faster to do that than to go up into this corner and click the little anchor. So, or press escape and hit waypoints. So set a hotkey for waypoints. It's really helpful. Um, so go to driftwood square, talk to the trader, and you're just going to grab this book enraged and this book, uh, Bouncing Shield, they will always be one book apart, so try to remember that. Sometimes the uh, Enrage will be here, sometimes Enrage will be here, and, but the uh, Bouncing Shield will always be one book away. So that's how I did that without even looking. Um, grab, sell all everything except for the Discharge scroll. Um, move into position so that you can steal the sword. Boom. And uh, you can either use Tactical Retreat, or you can use the pyramid to optimize the movement here. Um, the pyramid's a little faster, but I, I, I felt like I just needed to uh, keep the run going. So here, I messed up. I put the pyramid on the ground too close to the wall here, um, and I should have placed it you know, right around here so that I could do it. And also my character was in the wrong spot. So here we just place it on the other side of this rock and then uh, just kind of over into this corner. And we're going to walk in, use Cloak and Dagger. I got a really bad uh, vision, so I, I, sometimes you can teleport right to the book there. Okay, so you talk to the book, hit Escape, then go talk to the cabinet and uh, skip all the text. Then go into your inventory, double-click the Obsidian Lancet, combine it with the two items here um, that you just received. You place, it, <clears throat> place the product on the furnace and then open up the furnace, click on the smoke. Uh, use your ability here to go quickly. Um, so this was one of the issues uh, with using Cloak and Dagger from the Out of Bounds uh, is it's not off cooldown sometimes before you get here. So I wasted about half a second waiting for it um, while I was moving. But anyways, use your two abilities to speed up the process. Click on the, the, ver the, double, the double of you um, and then move your pyramid over um, to the next slot. This way, when you speak to him and you hit accept, uh, you'll already have cast Spirit Vision using your scroll wheel, and then move your scroll wheel off the bar. I messed up; I wasn't able to get it off, um, but I just clicked. I just clicked instead on uh, Devour. Then I swapped my pyramid with the Spirit Vision and threw the two useless skills that we never use again off the bar. So we exit using the fog, teleport to the Lady Vengeance, and right here, Lady Vengeance should have been right here. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I was too quick or too slow, uh, but she was. She should have been right here to talk to. But if she's not there, you can come to the front of the boat, talk to the boat, and if you wait a couple seconds, uh, Malady will appear, and we'll click on her. Um, the text skip is 11212, and then just skip the rest of the text um, normally. So that's Act 2. As you can see, I lost about 20 seconds there. Uh, yeah, all about that pyramid optimization, being able to move that pyramid accurately and quickly is very important. Uh, the, the, actually, the 20 seconds I lost was because of Malady didn't show up. I actually, can't, I actually checked. It, it was a full 20 seconds because of that one trip. Because of that one thing, Malady not showing up, I lost 20 seconds. Um, but luckily we make it back here in Act 3. So you uh, sp skip through the text uh, from Malady. Use, uh, I didn't have Tactical Retreat off cooldown, so I just used Cloak and Dagger. Um, clicked on the boat. And then here you're going to open up your bag and drop your red pyramid right on this uh, triangle here. And then uh, you should be able to drag it all the way up to the top of the edge here. Throw it up on, you didn't, you couldn't see it, but there is, oh, actually I messed, oh, no, I didn't mess up. Yeah, so we throw it right on this block here. Um, and then from here, you just want to throw it around this bag area or near this chair, but don't throw it past the chair. And then we're going to click it one more time, drag it up and throw it over here. Um, this drop or this, um, this act is also about pyramid optimization, but it's a little bit more tricky. My camera got messed up, but as you can see, the pyramid is there. I knew I knew it showed up. So um, if you can do this fast enough, you want to be able to place that pyramid before that attack of opportunity shows up because it'll block your pyramid placement. 
Um, so here I moved my camera to adjust for that. And uh, you want to place it up by this corner right here. And then it'll have vision down to the bottom. Uh, I made the mistake of teleporting early. My character is actually down here right now because I'm an idiot. Um, but you want to wait till the pyramid is all the way there and then teleport. I could have I could have completely blown this run with that. So yeah, we move the pyramid to the top of the stairs and then over by this plant. I'm trying not to put it under the plant because uh, it's just harder to click on if you do. Uh, anyways, and then move it up to this bridge platform. Uh, we move it over to the bottom of the stairs and then all the way up to the very tippy top of the stairs. Sometimes you get lucky, you'll be able to hit that rabbit. Um, move it to the first pillar here. Uh, grab the pyramid, throw it over to this pillar. Um, there's, you can optimize movement a little bit by like microseconds by moving the pyramid first and then clicking the pedestal because the pedestal takes so long to go. Um, anyways, so I'm just moving it and uh, clicking on them. Teleport to it. Uh, so here's where we use that discharge scroll on the plate. Be sure not to miss the plate because if you do, it's over. Click the switch, pick up your pyramid, head in, hit enter or one, um, or use the scroll wheel and, uh, oh crap, <laughs> I gotta go back a little bit. Pick up the pyramid, uh, head inside. So here, um, I click up the stairs really quick and then adjust the camera or vice versa and then use the teleporter pyramid to move directly to the door that's right here. So teleport to it. The enemy will talk to you um, and then you're going to grab your teleporter pyramid. And there's actually another little platform here, right here that uh, we can't see because of fog of war, but I know it's there. So place it there uh, and you can teleport to it straight through the door without having to walk in. Ooh, I messed up there. Um, but there is another platform somewhere around here, so be sure to uh, try and learn that. And you can adjust, if you if you really need to, you can adjust the camera and that'll remove the fog of war, but it just takes a few, a few milliseconds there to save. Um, so move the pyramid to the spot between these two pyramids, or roughly that close, um, and then you're going to walk into the corner here and use the blue pyramid to clip through and now we're done with the pyramids they'll reappear in our they'll they'll reappear in our backpack uh, at the end of this act okay so as you're walking in regardless you're going to lose a little bit of time to stat scaling so you want to go 40 strength boom boom um, i always scale strength first because i don't want to accidentally put one extra point in wits so strength and then wits with the rest of the points. Go to, you don't have to do this now either. You can do it later, but make sure you grab hothead or uh, not hot. Yeah. Hothead at some point. If you're going to do hothead now, only put, um, make sure you put 10 full points in warfare. Um, and one point in two handed and leave the last point. You can actually do zero points in two handed. If you grab hothead, I believe. But, uh, Anyway, so you grab one, okay. <laughs> so you grab one point in two-handed um, and leave the last point. That was a little convoluted. So uh, for his tech skip, you want to hit the first option, then the second option. Uh, if you don't, he'll like stop talking to you. He'll be like, oh, okay, you're not ready. So right here, I'm skipping the text slowly. Um, and then right when I get to Bishop Alexander, I can hit F5 and quick save and then quick load with F8 again to skip his turn. Uh, we're going to hit end and then it's going to be our turn. We're going to use uh, five. So the reason we get 22 wits is that if you don't, um, dead, undead Sabeel will actually come for you. So anyways, uh, teleport down here uh, using cloak and dagger and then use haste, uh, tactical retreat down to this spot here. So you're going to skip all this text. Um, you can spam the enter key as well to quickly uh, quickly hit that accept button. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just skipping text and unskippable cutscenes. And then right here, as soon as you get knocked down uh, for the last time, you can open up your inventory. And this is where you could scale strength uh, at a different time instead of scaling it before. Uh, you can o use your enraged skill book. Use... Uh, or put on the two-handed sword 
and also make sure you use the bouncing shield. Um, it's not important for this fight, but it's a it's a good spot to put on bouncing shield. Otherwise, you're wasting time later on. So here we're just going to use a tactical retreat to speed up our movement a little bit. Um, we're all set up with our stats and abilities and everything. Um, if so, right here. Uh, actually, I'll just turn it up a little bit so you guys can hear it. You want to wait for her to finish her voice line here. So right there, she says, "You are the." Uh, as soon as her text starts, you want to hit F5 to quickly save, um, and then wait until her text line is over, where she says, "You are the worst mistake I ever made." Um, as soon as it's over, you hit F8 to re to to start it again. Uh, the the reason being is that for some reason, if you don't let her finish her voice line and you skip through the text, the the turn skip doesn't work like it 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 did work in this one. So um, if it doesn't work, that's probably why. Is either you you did it wrong somehow, or you didn't uh, didn't wait for her voice line to finish before reloading. Anyways, so first thing we're gonna do is walk up and attack. So you just click on her to attack. Use uh, <laughs> I tried to look at the skill. Um, use all in on her and uh, that'll put her in her second form hit enter once here or just click end um i moved my so my pyramid here i moved it off the one slot because if i try and spam the scroll wheel i'll accidentally waste a bunch of ap so as you can see i have full ap so we move it off the one slot specifically for that so use all in on him use all in on him uh, and then you're just going to attack him again. And now you, you want to click in the, like in this area right here. If you try and click in other places, your character is going to, it's going to like try and walk. Um, I was having issues with that before, uh, earlier that night. So, uh, here, oh, did I, did I pause it? What just happened? Oh, okay. Um, so we use all in on him, uh, Click to attack and then use Tentacle Lash. Uh, and then use Play Dead. So you got to do everything in this specific order. Uh, well, the, the attacks don't really matter what order you do them in, but you need to make sure you do those attacks um, and use Play Dead at the end. Then as your character is falling down to Play Dead, you want to spam click on the boss and uh, attack him so that he doesn't regenerate health. So here we use Time Warp, this ability right here. Uh, and then on ourselves, and then we're going to use Enrage on ourselves. We click on our portrait so that we don't accidentally give Time Warp to the boss. Or Enrage to the boss, because that'd be scary. Uh, now we're just going to click him until he dies. <clears throat> so if for some reason you end up with 2 AP... Uh, at the end of this fight, just make sure as soon as you hit him that you hit and as soon as you use that AP that you hit end turn uh, But make sure you don't hit end turn before you actually hit him because uh, it may end your turn preemptively So like right here, you'd be like oh shit end turn if I had two extra AP, but this time I didn't need to do it. So It just ensures you have full AP during the next turn so we quickly skip the text and then use uh, tactical retreat and Click on Malady's Beacon, which takes us to the boat. So we just quickly skip through the text, um, move up to the spot right after the stairs, right about there, and then uh, use Cloak and Dagger, and then use Tactical Retreat to the front of the boat. Go talk to the ship to bring up Malady one more time. Talk to Malady and skip her text. And that is the end of Act 3. And here... Um, is where some of the biggest changes are. Uh, there was a lot of different ways for people to do things, um, but this is where some of the most time save uh, over the previous world records were. So we're gonna skip the text from Malady still, um, press the tilde key to bring up the waypoints, go to the Hall of Echoes. Gonna use, well, okay, so as you can see, both my abilities are on cooldown here. As your character's running, you wanna click to the front of the stairs here. Don't click on the stairs, click to the front of the stairs, and then uh, go into your inventory scale constitution. I made the mistake of clicking on the stairs so my character stopped moving while I was trying to skill. Um, here I do a quick save because there's a, a, there's a chance that I could fail the entire run if I mess this up. So I just decided, you know what, I'll waste the extra one second, do the quick save, or the two or three seconds, do the quick save. And uh, so we're going to throw the pyramid up and to the left um, as far as we can here. 
Uh, if you're in between this spot right here, you're pretty much good. We're gonna, and of course we're in a very good spot. Um, so we just click into bounds, and then as our character is almost there, uh, as he's right at the pinnacle of the rock, we're gonna hit teleportation, teleport our pyramid into bounds, and then uh, spam the one key to get inside. So now on the ground here, um, I didn't hold alt to show it up, but there's actually a paladin sword on the ground and a paladin shield on the ground that we can take. And uh, we're going to hold on to those till later. So here we just move the uh, pyramid up to the front of the table there and then move it onto the bed. Um, try to move it up to the front of the table because otherwise you may not get vision to the bed. So here we, we just attacked the, uh, the door to the sewer and headed inside with the pyramid. Uh, move the pyramid to the statue and then teleport to it. Then move the pyramid right to the edge of this door. And uh, from here, you can actually move the pyramid all the way from this door into uh, and through it. And again, just like the uh, just like before, you can hold your mouse on the pillar and the pyramid will go directly on top just like that. So from here, I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit so I can see, but I kind of use this as a marker and I place my pyramid just above it in this little crevice. And then from here, you can kind of place um, your pyramid anywhere in this area so long as it, out, it is out of bounds. Um, which is, so this, this lighter dark, this lighter area is not out of bounds. The dark area is the area that you can't actually see. I don't, this is glitching out hard. Anyways, so we use, um, tactical retreat down here. Um, and then we click on the stairs and skip the text. Uh, so we're going to walk to this little triangle on the ground, uh, to avoid a cutscene. We're going to use cloak and dagger and jump to the little spot that I had here that I could reach. Walk to the edge of this. Walk to this point on the cobblestone. Don't walk to the stairs. Uh, you'll initiate the cutscene. And so here, um, if you haven't already, you have to you have to skill the two points in Constitution, um, and then you also have to put on your Paladin Sword and Shield. You have to learn Shield Bounce. You also have to move Shield Bounce to the first slot in your um, in your ability bar. And if you haven't already, did I not? Oh. Okay, so what I should have done, um, I forgot to put points in uh, one-handed. So I should have went here and I should have thrown a bunch of points into the one-handed ability and that would have made run my run a little bit faster. Um, although it wasn't slow by any means, it still worked pretty well. So here, this is very important. Um, you're going to use either Tactical Retreat or uh, Cloak and Dagger depending on what you have. You're going to teleport down here, and then as soon as you click, you're going to spam the F5 key, uh, and you should get a saving before your character actually shows up. So see how my character is actually not there yet? Um, you should get saving, and then when it says quick save successful, you can hit F8, or you can spam F8 while it's quick saving, and it will load immediately when it's done. Um, this causes the game to glitch, uh, removes us from the fight here, and we can just attack and attack and attack. So the first thing we do is we use uh, shield bounce on Brachus, and then we're going to use. So what we're gonna, what we're doing here is we're attacking Brachus and then letting go of the control key and clicking on the ground to cancel the attack animation as soon as the attack animation hits. And then once sp uh, sh throw shield is off cooldown, we use it again. So attack, cancel, attack, cancel. So by, it's a really simple thing to do. Um, it's just, it, it just requires a little bit of focus and uh, with about five minutes of practice, you should be able to do this. You know, just hold control, attack, let go of control, click on brackets, and then you don't ever have to move your mouse. Um, so here we're going to rock walk um, just past this uh, these steps here uh, and that's how I know that I'm in the right spot. I can teleport up to here and then teleport to the front of the ship. We can talk to the ship and finish our run. Well guys, we hit 50 subscribers. <laughs> Not a massive milestone, but it's big to me. Uh, if you want to see more content, make sure you do subscribe, hit that like button. Uh, if you found this tutorial helpful and be sure to join the discord and guys if you want to see the full uncut unedited speedrun, it's also on my youtube 
and check out some of the other videos I made. I make a variety of content currently, as well as stream on Twitch, uh, Saturdays through Wednesdays, so make sure you drop a follow over there. And as always, stay worldly. <laughs>